Hey, we're Nicole and Miko, and good morning from Santiago. If you saw our last video, you'll know we were just hiking in Patagonia here in Chile. We have made our way north to the capital, Santiago, and today we are going to explore and eat as much good Chilean food as we can. So let's go. All right, we have joined a walking tour this morning. Don't worry, it's not gonna be like boring. We're not gonna take you on a two-hour walking tour with us. But we love joining walking tours because it really gives us like a good overview of what is the city about, what's the culture about, like what's going on in an area, a new area for us. So we've joined one today. We're gonna learn as much as we can before we go for lunch at a market and just eat to our heart's content. Our guide has been talking a lot though about safety. He's saying that uh, Santiago is not the safe place that it used to be. And I guess a large part of that is because uh, there's been a lot of immigration recently because of the crisis going on in Venezuela. And it's just uh, during COVID, some of the borders were unmanned, if you will, uh, for quite a long time. So lots of folks have just come over, but that also brought organized crime. The economy couldn't handle the influx of people. So there's a lot more people who are just having to engage in like informal economy and just making money any way they can. There's also a lot more people on the streets than I guess used to be, as we don't have homes. So he's been really telling us quite a lot about how to remain safe while we're here in the center of Santiago. So this is Cathedral de Santiago, one of the most important cathedrals in all of Chile. And it's such a beautiful, beautiful church, beautifully built. The paintings on the roof are gorgeous. That I think is probably most interesting that we've learned about on this walking tour is that in 2019 there were a lot of protests here in Santiago and it was actually to change the constitution and they were successful so there's been a lot of changes for like equal marriage laws and abortion laws and those are all really recent and part of the protests are some of the reason that there's so much graffiti in this city from what we understand that was sort of from 2019 during the protests so we see this everywhere They're, like the city so far just feels covered in what is this called? Graffiti. <laughs> okay, so our tour ended and our guide at the very end gave us a recommendation for a local sandwich place. And it does look pretty local and it looks super, super good. But we're not exactly sure how to order because it looks like you order from the middle and everybody makes it in the middle in front of you. So we'll find out. Okay, I think we ordered this right. We got the frikandela, or frikandela, which is a fritter of pork and beef dressed and boiled in meat gravy. It sounds amazing. Wow. Whoa. Gracias. I think it's like, I don't know if this is onions or like, almost like sauerkraut. I don't know. We didn't understand one of the words on the menu. We just wanted to get it because it looks like the thing everybody gets. That looks completely packed in. Uh, this could be a little messy. Everyone around us is eating with a fork and knife. So I think fork and knife it is. Okay, the first one's gonna be a bit of a monster bite. Oh. Just a very juicy burger with a ton of toppings. I don't know how else to describe it. <laughs> Do you think it's sauerkraut? I think so. I mean sauerkraut. But um, that's a really good burger. The meat is so juicy and so delicious. <laughs> Oh. oh, okay. Almost like hot doggy, like the ground meat. It's because there's pork in it, I think. Like I can really taste the pork. Very pork heavy. Mm -hmm. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's not my favorite thing in the world. <laughs> it tastes like a pork burger. Oh, yeah. Doesn't exactly look like much. <laughs> But it's delicious! <laughs> Highly suggest. Good recommendation from our guy. Okay, let's go eat more food. So we made our way to one of the big local markets here in Santiago. It's La Vega Central. We're hoping to get something to eat here, but so far we're finding a ton of other things besides food. There's lots of food here, but there's lots of things going on here too. So they call this the fruit market, but I've seen like everything. There's like dog food and string and toothpaste and eggs and like you could buy anything here, I think. Maybe not electronics. <laughs> All right, I think I'm getting, I think I'm getting flan, but I asked what's flan and then he said a lot of words. I heard leche, I'm not exactly sure, but I think it's flan, which we've heard is a super, super, super common uh, dessert here in Chile, so we have to try it. Uh, Ahí tiene cubiertitos y tiene servilleta. Ah, gracias. Para servicio. That's a huge piece. That's <laughs> a really big piece. And this cat, this cat would like to share with me. He's following me around. Look at him. Look at him, little stinker. No, get away from my plan, cat. Just my plan. He really wants the plan. All right, we're going to eat the plan standing up. 
Otherwise, I think we're gonna eat flan and cat hair. He put this like syrup all over it. This is like a serious dessert, man. Oh, mm. oh, it's so sweet. I think this is um corn syrup. That is delicious. It's very sweet. You need about a quarter of this piece. Awesome. Great choice, Chile. Mmm. That's good. All right, well, we didn't quite get fruit at the fruit market, but you just, <laughs> when you see good flan, you just can't stop and walk away. You yeah. gotta try a little Especially bit. Especially in Chile, because it's really a thing here. That is so good. <laughs> I mean, it feels like I'm eating sugar cubes straight up, <laughs> but like that are mushy. They're like soft. But that's Perfect. really, really good. <laughs> This market is huge and uh, lots going on. I'm not gonna lie, I feel a little bit lost. We're uh, trying to leave now, but oh, I think I'm on the exit. All right, we've made it to the Central Market de Santiago. Uh, it's more of like a fish market and it has a ton of restaurants. So far, compared to the last market, this place is a lot more jumpier. People are really uh, eager to get you into the restaurant, but um, Right now, we're a little full, so we're not really sure if we're gonna eat anything right away. Thank you. That is So, being a seafood market, I had to try some of the seafood um, here. Uh, I'm not up for a big meal right now, but I figured a good compromise between getting some seafood and trying out more of the local cuisine is uh, crab empanada. I'm pretty sure it's crab because he said empanada. So I think that's crab. Um, it looks huge and it smells so good. <laughs> Butchering it. Okay, I'll show you the inside. There's not a ton of filling in there, but that's okay because it is so fragrant. Mm. That's such gross. <laughs> that was good. Very seafoody, so Nicole wouldn't like it. I love empanadas because they just come in all sorts of different shapes and tastes. Wow, I can hear that crunch. Mm. That was good. All right, we have left the fish market and are walking back downtown into Paseo Estado, which is really lively right now. We walked around here for our tour this morning. It was a little bit more quiet because it was early in the morning, but everything really opens up in the afternoon. We're gonna try and find another dessert because South America, um, Chile included, just like incredible desserts. So we are on the hunt for some more. That's <laughs> A few things in the world I like better than a delicious coffee and a great piece of cake. This is like pure happiness, right here. It's called Torta de Mil Hojas, and hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, which I think in English translates to cake of a thousand leaves, because it's like tons and tons of little layers of like pastry. I think traditionally it has like, um, I forget the word, I think it's like morjas. I think it's uh, like kind of like a pureed fruit in it. This one though might have dulce de leche, which would be delicious. So, let's try it. Look at that. Mm. Oh. Okay, I definitely think it's focus of that chain there. Mmm. And walnuts. And the cake is actually quite dry. You're gonna need a glass of water with it. That is super good though. It's really sweet, but like not, doesn't quite overdo it. Which is like dolce de leche. It's not like overdone sweet, which is why I think I love it. Also, we read that this is a really common dessert to have at birthdays and like big celebrations. Um, yeah, it's awesome. 10 out of 10, we'll eat again. Okay, so we have been seeing this all day. It's called Mote con Ostil. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Um, if I'm honest, I've been avoiding trying it because it does not look appetizing. Like, look at that. That does not look like something I'm going to enjoy, but we're trying it. It is a like dehydrated peach in its own juices with extra sugar, a little bit of cinnamon. And then this down here is the mate. It's like a kind of barley here. So I'm honestly nervous. It smells really sweet and really peachy. It feels more like a food than a drink because it's so much. I actually don't know how to eat this. Do I drink it, you think? Do you think I drink it? 
I'm gonna try drinking it. Okay. Not as sweet as it like smells. It's not bad. It's cold, which is helpful. I don't know about the weird is so weird. Ugh. Okay, the barley stuff. Okay. It's good. It's like barley and pear juice or um peach juice. That's a super strange combination to me though. I don't really know how you eat it. Do you eat it? Like you just take a spoonful every time? I you must. Oh. I know, but it's weird, right? That's cool. Like, why is there crunchy stuff in it? It's like kind of bland, and then it's perfect though because the whole juice is so yeah, yeah, sweet. Yeah. Should we try this? I'm yeah. a little scared. Mmm. <laughs> peach juice. Is it good? Yeah, yeah, really good. Okay. It reminds me of like the little canned peach oh. juices that you have as a kid. I read it was dehydrated, but looks pretty hydrated. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't feel dehydrated. That's actually pretty oh, good. That's pretty good. Okay. It's like a nice. Like, it's good, like a meal. It's a good drink for a hot day. It feels like a snack and a drink combo. It's a two for one. Okay. I like Clever. it. Clever. Clever. So we're on the bus headed up to San Cristobal Hill, which is like the highest point right here in the city of Santiago. Uh, usually you can take a Telefico up, which is like a cable car, but it's not running today. There's also a Finica you can take, but that has not been running for quite some time, from what I understand. So. Today we are taking a bus, because that's the only choice. We're just gonna head up and get some really cool views. There's actually a ton of stuff up here, but we'll see what we can find. <laughs> you know, after spending a ton of time hiking in Patagonia, it is really nice to get a ride uphill. <laughs> All right, the bus made it to the top of San Cristobal Hill. <laughs> I feel like we didn't earn our right to be here because other people have like run here and biked here. We just got on the bus, but that was a very good choice because it definitely would take us at least an hour to walk up here. But it's really beautiful. You can see the city behind me. Our guide earlier today actually said that if you go anywhere with a good, like to get a good view of Santiago, don't go before like 4 p.m. because the smog, which you can still see behind me, is apparently quite bad until now. So it's still quite bad if you ask me. And it's like after six, but <laughs> better than earlier, I guess. So up here at San Cristobal Hill, and you're gonna do tons of things. There's a zoo up here, apparently. Uh, there is a Japanese garden. There is a church and the big statue of Mary, which we actually don't have time to go see or we're gonna miss the last bus back down this hill. It's a great beautiful place, really neat place. It's very like, there's a lot of like nature and greenery, which is refreshing because of course, Santiago is a huge city, so you don't get a ton of that uh, when you're down sort of closer walking down the streets. So it's quite beautiful up here. All the Chilenos that we met at the O-Trek in Patagonia said that when we get to Santiago, we have to try some pisco la. So pisco la is basically pisco, which is kind of like a brandy or like a high proof spirit mixed with like a Coke. And I think she put some Red Bull in there. I'm not exactly sure. So this may not be true to the definition of pisco la cocktail, but it's pretty, it's pretty close. Cheers. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. You know what? It reminds me, now don't hate me for saying this, it reminds me of a rum and coke, but Pisco and Coke. Pisco, I guess, is really famous here in Chile and, and in the surrounding regions, so a lot of people love Pisco La, so this is not too bad. Another drink you could try is Pisco Sour. I'll try that next time. I do not think this plate is big enough. <laughs> Okay, so this is a chorianos. I understand that it's like a pretty typical dish here. It's like fries and then topped with a bunch of stuff. So in this case, I got shredded beef, chives or green onion, bacon, and there's a ton of cheese down there somewhere. Uh, and I see a little bit of onion as well. It looks so stinking good, as if we haven't eaten enough food today. Okay, let's try. Okay, it's like, it's like an upgraded taco. This is so good. Oh, my God. I don't think I'm sharing. This is for me. I got it. This is an individual portion. <laughs> okay, I gotta have some. It smells so good. I'm still pretty full, honestly, from a day of eating, but I think I'm ready again after smelling this. You're, uh, you're having some? 
Like you can finish. That wasn't in the in the cards. You can't finish all of that. I mean, I could try. You get the leftovers. I'll have all my favorite bits. You get the rest. Wow. Oh my goodness. I think it's because the beef is salty. It's so good. That just that just elevated fries to a whole new level. You know what? It reminds me of a Canadian um, poutine without the gravy and an upgrade on all the toppings. That is good. You're totally right. This is like this is like upgraded poutine. Come on, Canada. <laughs> this is so good. All right, that food was delicious, which is great because that's pretty much all we could fit in our stomachs for today. Yeah, we're incredibly, incredibly full. And it's gotten dark since we went into that last restaurant, so we are going to leave you here. Um, this is actually also our last video for Chile. Well, yeah, we've got new adventures coming up. Yeah. We're heading over to Bolivia tomorrow. Yes. So that's going to be incredible. So hit subscribe mm -hmm. if you want to see more of that. Yeah, and we'll meet you there. See you in the next one. With regards to the... Uh, Earlier this morning, uh, we mentioned earlier because of the increase of us. Uh, Alright, we're. That's a loud, loud bus. Let me do that again. Okay, I've been walking around for a little while with this and just like casually eating it. And that is actually really good. It's like a drink and like a little bit of food in one time. Not bad. Great for a hot day.